Just say no. That was Nancy Reagan's anti-drug campaign. <laughs> this message was everywhere. It flooded TV. PSAs played all the time. My G.I. Joe and Transformer cartoons were bombarded with these commercials. One second, I'm watching two giant robots battle for the AllSpark. The next, I'm staring at some strange mustache man holding a box of drugs asking, This yours? Where did you get it? Who taught you how to do this stuff? You, all right? I learned it by watching you. There's a moment of silence realization. Washes over him. Cue voiceover. Parents who use drugs have children who use drugs. Fade to black, commercial ends, and I just want my robots back. I fucking hate this commercial. My father was an addict. Drugs, alcohol, the whole nine. If it gave him a high, then he would try. When he wasn't smoking weed and drinking Jack Daniels, my dad could be fine snorting coke and smoking heroin. This was my childhood. I grew up with drugs all around me, Tin foil, burnt spoons, stale stench of sweat, and the sour smell of heroin being cooked up. This was normal to me. My preteen years were filled with watching my dad and his friends escaping reality. People were constantly in and out of my home all the time, buying and trying. I was a kid. Who was I to question this? I didn't really understand what was happening. Again, this was just normal to me, the way it was. I'm eight years old, sitting in my room, and I hear my dad shout, Brody! Come here. As I leave my room, I, I feel the air begin to change. It's hotter, the air is stale, heavy with tension, it's hard to walk. Brody, sit down. We need to talk to you. Me and your mom are getting a divorce. Kelly is going to live with your mom. We want you to decide who you want to live with. Those words hang for what feels like an eternity. I mean, what do I know? I'm eight. My parents are getting divorced. I taste salt as I wipe the tears away. I'm in shock. I mean, what did I really know? I'm just a kid who believes that rolling joints for my father and his friends is normal. How do I decide who I want to live with? It was an unfair contest from the beginning. My dad in my ear, son, you can't leave me. Kelly's going to live with your mother. You need to stay with me. A boy needs to be with his father. Besides, who's going to throw the ball around with you? A boy needs his father. Makes sense to me. See, my dad played dirty politics while my mom sat silently on the sidelines hoping I, I would choose her. I didn't. See, that conversation I will always remember. You know what I don't, though? Him playing ball with me. Him being there for me. Him providing a safe household to live in. Him providing any form of normalcy that a kid's need. These things didn't exist. As I became a teenager, I began to see things differently. I realized how much my upbringing sucked, how it wasn't normal. Remembering those PSAs on TV made me question what was around me. They bothered me. I, I still hated that statement. Parents who use drugs have children that use drugs. It's not that simple, right? See, I promised myself that I, that was bullshit, and I wouldn't become a statistic to prove it right. I will make my own decisions. I knew that this wasn't the life I wanted for myself. I will not throw away my life away like he did. His bad decisions will not determine my choices. I was born and raised in the Bronx, New York City. My favorite time was when it snowed. See, New York City is a busy place that never shuts down. I mean, we're talking 24-7, a live, non-stop action. Then it snows, and everything stops. It's quiet and beautiful, peaceful. The dirty city is covered in this pristine white that blankets everything. The trains aren't running, no cars honking their horns, no one's outside yelling at each other. It's just calm, quiet, and peaceful. Except for the sound of my dad coughing up blood. This the snow can't cover. So I'm 13 now, and my dad has finally decided to quit drugs and alcohol, cold turkey, on his own. It's hard to sit there with someone you care for who's in obvious pain and not be able to do anything to help them. We lived in a two-bedroom apartment that we shared with my uncle, who himself was a covering addict. My uncle and I each had a room, which left my dad to sleep in the living room. The whole house had a, a rotten smell of puke and sweat. I, I could taste it. I felt trapped in my room. I, I did, don't want to see him. Lying there, shaking, sweating. Between the grunts and groans, I would hear him crying miserable sounds all day and night, 
please make it stop. Hiding in my room as far away as I can get, I was saying the same thing. This, like his sobriety, only lasted a few days. I guess it only hurts less when you don't have far to fall off the wagon. Parents who use drugs have children who use drugs. Man, screw that commercial. I remember the first time I drank beer. I heard my dad yelling from the garage, Brody, grab me a beer. I'm busy, hold on. Come on, I'll give you a sip. Tasting beer for the first time, I loved it. It was sweet. I felt like a man holding that bottle. Like I belonged, just one of the guys. Fast forward to my first day of uh, ninth grade. What better way to celebrate the first day of school than with a pint of Jack Daniels, right? See, my buddy Dante came over before class. We grabbed my, bo my dad's bottle from the fridge and began to drink. I had no problem taking that bottle from my dad. Shit, I actually bought it for him. See, he was constantly uh, borrowing money from me to supply his habits. So since this bottle's mine anyway, we drank it and it tasted sweet. We got drunk and went to school. Only lasted a few periods before I had to come home and uh, sleep off that great decision. Sometime after this, my, my dad decided to quit again. This time my grandma paid for him to go to a rehab facility in Florida, and he was gone for 10 months. My uncle was left to watch over me. Now, he did his best, but he didn't know what he was doing. So he didn't have kids of his own, and he was struggling with his own issues. He was just the adult at home, but he didn't know how to deal with me. I had no rules, no boundaries. I was basically left to take care of myself. So I did, and trouble found me. I was cutting class, smoking weed, and drinking almost daily. To me, I was just having fun. Right? What else did I know? Things were worse when my dad re returned from rehab. See, here he is, newly sober, and he wants to finally start being a father to me? Fuck that. Dad, where were you when I needed you? So I'm 15, and I thought I was a shit. I became more and more of a problem at home. My only comfort was a 40 ounce in my hand. We would hang out in the Pelham Parkway projects, just being a dumb thug, doing stupid shit and getting fucked up. What else did I know how to do? Just having fun, right? See, the projects weren't all bad. Many good people lived there just trying to get by. Unfortunately, the projects also had the drug dealers, hustlers, pimps, and all them dirty little secrets that a kid should be sheltered from. It was easy to fall in with the wrong crowd, and I was fitting right in. I was 16 years old and king of my own world. Each night, my friends and I would meet up, buy some 40s of St. Ives and King Cobra and do our thing, whatever we wanted. Should take some acid, go to junior prom, why not? It's no big deal. See, I was living how I wanted and doing what I had to do to get by. Need some food? No problem. I'll just go to the bodega, fill up my pockets with whatever I wanted. I mean, who's gonna stop us? Remember my new kicks I got? That's right. I had them caramel loans. They were on point back in the day. Purple and black, real smooth. Now, I didn't have money from them, but I got them anyway. So I was living the project life, hustling and doing what I had to do. Around this time, the older cats in the projects be began calling me and my boys the Yalkies. Now, at first, that shit was funny. But wait, what? We're the alcoholics of the projects? Something's wrong here. Parents that use drugs have children that use drugs. Just having fun, right? Summer came. And I left New York to go visit my mom in California. Now, I hadn't seen my mom and sister for a year, and this is what I needed. I always found comfort in my mom. She was the opposite of my dad. She was stability and love. I was always able to talk to her and be open. I didn't want to go back to New York. Finally, at 16, I was able to make the smart decision. Thankfully, my mom agreed, and I remember standing there on the balcony on the phone with my boy John. Yo, John. I think I'm staying in Cali. My mom says I can live with her. I think I need to do it, bro. That's good, yo. Real good. There's too much beef for you here. You're gonna wind up dead if you stayed. What? Yeah, bro. We were talking about it, all of us. Nothing good for you here. Damn. When I told my dad my decision, he didn't stand in the way. This time there was no politicking, no lies, no empty promises just a new opportunity before me. So a lot has changed over the last 20 years, but one thing that doesn't, 
Still hate those damn fucking PSAs. Brody Gogats.